Thank you for tuning in to the World Builders Anvil, Season 2, Episode 10, Safeguarding Baby Yoda. Don't know where to start building your fantasy world? Do you need more? Does it make sense? Forget any worries and become a crafter of imagination. This is the place where we will prime your mind. Now, it's time to heat up the forge, break out the mithril ingots and hammer. Welcome to the World Builders Anvil. I'm Jeffrey W. Ingram. And I'm Michael Miller. Let's sup from the muck of Java and build. Feeling like Harrison Ford from The Witness. This is Jeffrey W. Ingram. And Harrison Ford from The Fugitive, because I've got a bigger beard right now. I am Michael Miller. That's not saying much. I've never had the skill of beard. I know, but I've got like I've got the kind of like the beginning of the movie going right here. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Well, it's funny. My Looking wife, very Harrison Ford. Uh, when I met my wife, I had a goatee. Mm-hmm. Nearly, nearly, it nearly connected between my mustache and my uh, actual. Uh, <laughs> I keep yeah. nearly, nearly connected. Nearly, yeah. <laughs> and, and I keep and, and I, I keep saying that growing a beard is not a skill; <laughs> it's just a biological happenstance. <laughs> One of which I, I suck at. But the, the irony was can't suck I, spent, at it. <laughs> I spent 10 years sucking at this. And they almost got the part where you couldn't tell that it wasn't quite connected on one side. It was it wouldn't quite grow together. But it, mm-hmm. it would cover up because it was long enough. It was long enough. And then I started my desk job. I, I, I got my first desk, my first real job in air quotes. Mm-hmm. I, I was uh, working in the industrial engineering office at UPS. And I show up for my first day and I've worked there for years as a package handler. And many of those years as I was growing the goatee out and I show up, I'm very excited, you know? Um, and, and the guy looks at me and goes, Oh, you can't have facial hair. You have to shave it off. Uh, okay. Isn't that illegal now to say that? Uh, not if it is a standard, I think you stick by. And you have no exceptions for. And I think you could have a mustache, but not a beard side. Mm. So I could have kept my pathetic looking mustache. Mm. Um, but I, I I couldn't even I just like no, I just I would look even more stupid with the mustache. I look pretty uh, silly with just a mustache, but sometimes I, I like what well, I, I will shave and just leave parts of some it. Some guys can pull it off. You but you gotta have that 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 good buff. Well, I do like I, but yeah, I, yeah, this is you, I, you I know this is too. riveting for the listeners. I know, <laughs> I, like I, I I do, but like when I shave it and I just leave the mustache, I'll sometimes post the photos, and my brother's like, "You look like Borat, like <laughs> shave that off." And my wife can't handle it. She t- she likes the full beard, but she can't handle pretty much anything else. Like I've tried to do like because I used to do a goatee and I used to do all mm-hmm. kinds of like other things. You could but, actually accomplish things with your beard, yes. But I really just look good with either full be- full beard, five o'clock shadow, or nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I pretty much look good with nothing. I'm lazy and I usually have some form of shadow. Yeah, I was gonna say it's you usually like do have some subtle. Five five month uh shadow. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. So okay, get for those of you for those so of you paying off, attention, we're mm-hmm. gonna talk about Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian. So yes. if you guys have not watched it yet, please go watch it. Don't listen to this. We are going to talk about things. So there, there will there's be gonna spoilers. be at least minor spoilers. And now I say minor for two reasons. One, the point we're talking about, I think it's going to be relatively minor in the scope of what happens in the Mandalorian series. Probably. However, but, I don't know that because it's not done. Yes. And we could always get dera- uh, derailed if you have listened to the show before and maybe bring up something else that is yes, adjacent. We, yes, we so, might. I'm, at all bets are off. We might talk about anything in the show, and so odds assume, are we will. Assume that you, sh- you should uh, go watch. I think it's like 11 episodes uh it's it's 11 episodes right now but as of this episode as of our show being released it'll probably be 12 or 13 yeah so it's funny because we were talking uh jeff and i were talking the other day and and a mandalorian's been out for more than a year at this point Mm -hmm. um and i still didn't have disney plus as of like six days ago and i have been waiting and waiting waiting to pull the trigger and i've been purposefully avoiding all Mandalorian information for which this entire hard. time, which is hard. So, of course, there's certain things that I absolutely knew. Um, but Jeff and I were talking over the weekend, and 
he was adamant that we we're going to talk about the Mandalorian. And I was like, Ugh. I was like, so does that mean I should like order Disney plus and binge watch all of the Mandalorian tomorrow? And he's like, yeah, I would. <laughs> so <Yeah>. I did. <laughs> and my yeah, wife did I, too. I, I literally, I gave and him, Sarah I gave got him roped 11 in. hours to watch 11 episodes. Yeah. yeah. Like and in 12 hours we're recording this. So get going. And yeah. he did it. He hasn't slept in over three days. <laughs> I don't know how that math works, but it does. Yeah. That's not um, exactly true. I've, I've gotten plenty of sleep. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, uh, yeah. So one of the things, you know, that really prompted it was because of, uh, I like to use Google discover on my phone to get articles. Uh, if, if I want non, real news articles or l- less real news articles, but I want something that's going on out there. I go to Google discover because mm-hmm. they, they spy so effectively on me that they're pretty good at delivering things I want. And so I start seeing all of these episodes. Is, 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 this, up. Is, is this like you type in Google discover? You, I don't think you can really get to it on the desktop yet. You have to be on your phone. Oh. And if you go into like the Chrome browser on the phone, there will be a discover, um, uh, uh, thing that you can click on there or if you uh, go into like the google search bar like i do a lot of google searches if you scroll all the way to the bottom of that it'll say discover more uh, which is how i typically do it um i literally just kind of go in and say hey uh i go to my okay google thing i, I don't have it set automatically i have to push the button if i want to do that but if i scroll all, all the way to the bottom of mine it says check out discover and it literally gives me a news feed and it it was delivering a lot of articles on baby yoda since the mandalorian has begun like 10 million episodes mm-hmm. of ba- or things of baby yoda and like michael up until recently i've been avoiding them i've only had it for a couple months at this point and uh, i start seeing all these and i had been watching it at the point where i was seeing all of these things coming up about people are have lost their schnizzle about baby yoda um, you know, the, the, the showrunner really screwed up baby Yoda this week. I'd watched the episode. I knew what they were talking about. And the event being, I believe on three or four occasions during, uh, the episode with the passenger, which is, I think season two, episode two, I believe you're correct. Um, baby and, Yoda and part, eats. part, part into episode three, but mostly episode two. Yeah. Um, I don't think he actually eats any in episode two. I don't think that's, I think, I think you're correct there. I'm just saying the passenger, it shows up in episode three. This is episode three, two, but in episode two, he eats, I think four of its eggs, his unspawned well, eggs. I'm going to argue that a little bit. We see him actually eat four, but when he is discovered by the Mandalorian and he's got the jar of the spawn, we don't know how we many know he's how eaten. Many and he honestly, eaten. it looks like he's eaten way more because that was much more full and I see, because you were actually looking for that. Actually, I was looking for that. I, d- I didn't go back. Well, to I knew it was a bad count. idea. I oh, yeah, it was, it was a it really was, bad idea. It was an obviously bad yeah. idea. Like the first time, like she's so, you know, clutching this. Like this is literally the remainder According of her bloodline. Her, yeah, she says it's the end of her bloodline. And um, and and so a lot of people are taking this as baby Yoda committing genocide killing off a species, which I would argue is probably not true. Yeah. Um, even if what this woman's saying, it's not necessarily her and her husband might not be the only two of the species. Well, that's what, I, that's my bit. The way I see it, it's just their family and, and not that, which is not still, that I'm trying, still, not that I'm trying to justify him eating the rest of a family. No, it's fact, okay. It's just a yeah, family right, right, he's right, eating. Yeah. It's just this one family. But my argument is, is I'm not going to even argue the fact that these are un, um, uh, these aren't fertilized. Well, they I are. Don't care. They are, are not. They? She's they are not taking them. They have to travel at the the, the sub light speed to get to her husband on another planet. Because like fish, fish don't, um, and a lot of amphibians, they lay eggs and then uh, the oh the, yeah is gotcha. added. Then so she was going dusting. to her husband so he could do his duty, and then the eggs could start growing. And uh, they apparently hatch very fast. Um, but. Uh, so articles, say, about, so, articles about, so articles about baby Yoda committing genocide. Is genocide or attention. murder. And I'm sure there were some too defending it. Those weren't coming up in my feed because those aren't as clickbaity defending them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, um, but, you know, I'm saying from, from one, from a, there's actually, you know, they weren't just trying to be gross, I don't think. They actually, I think, had purpose behind their intention. I'm sure they do. From, from a storytelling perspective. Because I, I say, 
you know, you know, everything in a story needs to have a purpose and it's not always plot related, but it's always, it's always to help out the, 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 the person cons- consuming the media. Yeah. Um, and, and so we learn, we do learn at least, at least three things or mm-hmm. four things from this one. Uh, they were having hunger issues uh, because of uh, the the scenario leading up to the moment where uh, he's literally questing to deliver the baby to the Jedi. Mm-hmm. Um, um, he does not have the proper ability to get food to uh, baby Yoda. Uh, ergo, I think both him and baby Yoda are starving. He can just handle it better because he's a Mandalorian. Baby mm-hmm. Yoda is an infant. If you've ever had a child, I'd always argue it's the reason children aren't capable of moving fast is because they would try and eat you um, <laughs> and they do try and eat you. There's just, they have no teeth and they're, they're really clumsy. Um, so um, they're really horrible predators. <laughs> they are really horrible predators. And maybe Pre- we'll do. Episode, it, although, uh, although, although, it's although, monsters. although baby Yoda has been proving otherwise. <laughs> So number two, well, yeah, and no, I, he's very I, capable for for what's supposed to be a Yoda infant. So um, number two, I think is hilarious. You wrote, "Baby Yoda is no vegan." <laughs> no, no, he's definitely not a vegan. And you kind of actually knew this coming into the episode. Yeah, you knew this Yoda already because he ate a, ate the frog. Things, like, no, and problem. I'd argue the truth is he's not eating sentient beans. Uh, where this is out to our knowledge, he's not eating sentient beans up to now. Um. And of course, he goes on and eats a few spider thingies. Yeah. Um, now let me to, a, let me ask you what yeah. you think about this. Well, one of the guys at work we were talking about when he has the frog in his mouth at the village, and he spits it out. I thought he just kind of spit it out. My my buddy at work thinks he spit it out because the other children were watching him, and I and no. he was embarrassed. And I was like, I don't think so because he doesn't seem to care. Like I he would was, imagine it is more to do with the type of frog he was trying to ingest. That's had something venomous that came out that was like, uh, uh now well, I think you're making a bit of a stretch there. I just think, he no, no, no. I mean, that's the reason why a lot of frogs excrete stuff yeah. is it's actually to uh, get forget, spit out. It's venom because venom, I think venom is defense and poisons offense. I, I get those two confused. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of those two. I think it's, I think it's venom, but venom, I think is the aggressive one. It's poison. Poison. A lot of frogs are toxic and, and, and their coloration, you know, for certain kinds, you know, show that they're super toxic. Hmm. Um, and it's, it's to, uh, get the prey to not eat them. Right. Um, and well, some frogs will adopt the, them. Yes. Yes. Or prey. Either one. Well, they're they prey. Anything. Yes. That's true. You never know with baby Yoda around. Right. Um, but I think it was maybe something more like that, where it maybe may, might not have been quite to that degree, but maybe it just didn't taste good. I seriously doubt that Baby Yoda felt any compunction one way or the other. Uh, yeah, that's my that's my feeling of of the of the matter. I don't because I he... said give the chance a baby will eat you. Yeah. Uh, the next you have here is the Mandalorian is a horrible parent, and so is the passenger. And I yes. agree with a hundred percent. Totally. In the defense of the Mandalorian, he's not technically Baby Yoda's parent, but he is he is his guardian. But and he is and, the guardian and the item. and the armorer straight up said, "Until you deliver him, you are his father." So well, that's true. I she de- she she deemed him. That's the good thing about about uh, uh, going through it so quickly like that. You you don't miss you don't forget that point when you get well. To, I forgot about I, but that. also, I'm I remember trying. he had been quested. I don't remember the. Yes, uh, yes, she straight up said that. But also, I'm trying to remember a whole lot of information mm-hmm. all at once. So I'm sure there's yeah. a lot of things that it I'm can be not overwhelming too. Yeah. yeah, you miss the same stuff for the same for a different reason. Yeah. Um, uh, now uh, the passenger is because the passenger is like, this is so important. We have to go at, at like like sub like, yeah sublight speed yeah, right. sublight speed so the babies don't explode. Which I thought that was a very BSC science fiction need of a plot, yeah I um, thought the same thing kind of thing but whatever I I'm very forgiving for that kind of stuff um, so you know um, but such a good parent I'm like like Michael says you meet it she's clutching on with their life can barely let that go then all of a sudden she's and then put it, in the, put, it in the <laughs> put in the cargo hold put in the cargo hold while we fl- no I don't yeah think I don't think happen. so uh, I, I hold on to my mother. I hold on to my lunchbox. You think I I'd be letting go of of my potential mm-hmm. spawn? 
And yes, it's not going to happen, especially at that age. I'd have it. I have it. I have it right, right, a I'd have it bit right there, either in my lap or strapped at my feet, or. Yeah. And now I'd argue if, if 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 her kids were more like, you know, in those really annoying teenage years, uh, and they're super rebellious, then I could have sure stick them in the car to hold. Eaten. Exactly. But at this point, but if they were teenagers, you know, they wouldn't have to fear of a of a baby Yoda eating them. Well, you don't know. Baby Yoda could force a swallow. You don't know what that means. I don't means. know. They crush them down okay. and drink them. That's right. Like a little can. Uh, yeah, that's that that that's not disgusting. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's be clear, though. This episode is more than just clickbait by including Baby Yoda in the title. Just barely. Just barely. Barely. Barely a little um, more. I know Michael was like, uh, don't we have a whole purpose for season two being about I, the meta level building? I argued and I almost fought Jeff not to do this episode, but we talked about it and I'm like, okay, we could do it. Mm-hmm. It was my decision because it's to very allow this episode topic, <laughs> especially the way I, I, I sent him like a text saying, we're going to do a, 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 an episode on, on babies committing genocide. And he was like, um, okay. Well, actually my, my initial sn- w- response, I think was something like, um, what but sure (laughs) i was i was i was like what are you talking about babies committing (laughs) genocide how are we gonna shoehorn that in and i hadn't watched of course the mandalorian yet and that led to the conversation where jeff said watch this show so and um so uh but here are like three reasons why i think this is actually an important topic and this comes to one the way characters are developed today i think sometimes poorly when characters aren't done well, protagonists especially. Mm-hmm. Um, and you see this a lot actually both ways where antagonists have to be uber utter evil and or protagonists have to be uber uh, utter perfect. And mm-hmm. the thing is, protagonist one, don't have to be good. I think Michael will be the first to agree. He, he talks quite a bit about uh, sure fiction will. he likes where, where sometimes villains can be the protagonist. And, and I'm I'd also- argue even if they are cute, it does not matter. Yeah, it they doesn't don't mean they're have innocent. to be good. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm a big. There was some show with that where they took advantage of, of that where there was a bunch of these cute and cuddly little creatures, and everyone's like, oh, like the, the characters in the show are like, oh, they're so cute, and like they open their mouth and there's like big teeth and teeth they're, they're and yeah. predators and yeah. That we've we've seen that sort of joke. That gag, in a that lot gag of, is probably shown more than once. Yeah, that That's gag's right. shown up a lot. Um, I, I mean, this immediately leads me into an, and I won't go on a long tangent here, but um, anti-heroes, um, you take a look at characters like the Punisher mm-hmm. and the television show, the Punisher, especially season two is amazing. Um, you know, he's your protagonist. He's the guy you're rooting for, but he does some awful things in the name of, of committing to the greater good. He hurts and kills and brutalizes a lot of people. Now they're all bad people. Most of them, pretty much all of them, Mm -hmm. but he's doing some horrible things. He's doing things that all the bad guys do worse sometimes. Yeah, definitely worse, but you're rooting for him the whole way. Um, characters like Dexter, perfect example. Mm -hmm. You know, here's a guy who straight up murders. Classic anti-hero. Just straight up murders people. Yeah. So he feeds his need the wrong way or the right way, I guess. The best. I mean, if you want to get into a right and wrong discussion, but I mean, it's still premeditated murder. Yeah. As I was going to say, you know, it's, you know, he knew he was going to do it. So he chose an appropriate target Mm. uh, for him Um, or better than, you know, like you know, but here's my other argument too: is there's an expectation based off of and this is you know, um, pe- people being prejudiced here, assuming that because it is the same species as Yoda, that this child's going to end up being a good guy. Well, that's the thing I wanted to actually talk about. Like the, the yeah. other, the that's other the more th- interesting the, discussion. Yeah, I, I think so. And the other bit, it like, oh, it's cute, so oh, it's good. It's like no, it's cute because it's young, like. And we have it has the round face. I don't I don't want to get into uh, a long discussion about the different abilities that they're allowing to be displayed and how they're very advanced abilities for him being so young. But we did see uh, a straight up dark side ability. And I would love to see Baby Yoda be Sith. I would love to see him be. I, I would think that would be, guy. I to think me, that, that would be, be the awesome. interesting long term story. 
mm-hmm. message with him. Unfortunately, I don't think he's going to age enough in this. I don't show. think so. No, but I think if they do something later on, uh, maybe after the 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 sequels. And I'm I'm very um, curious to see where this character is going to end up, especially if they're like, okay, well, there is Jedi that you can take him to. So it's like this is after Return of the Jedi, which. The only Jedi yes. that he could be taken to is Luke that we're aware of. That's the only one I know of. Leia, we know. Not a Jedi. I thought she was, tr- she trained herself. And I guess she just trained herself in four she, hours. At this point, the- this, this, uh, I want to say, I looked it up. I, I want to say the show takes place only five years after Jedi. So she's, so, probably, if she has, she's not very advanced. I don't think so, she's, so it'd be, although it'd be if very you, interesting. Although if you go according to the movies, she could be a Jedi by now. See, I I would have thought, you know, knowing their 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 plan production, that this would have been before Star Wars. Of course, yeah, she can't be doing after. the great storyline with with Boba Fett, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I did really appreciate as a fan of uh, as a fan of Deadwood, uh, mm. the the marshal and the bartender. Yes, both. Now they couldn't get Swearinger, I guess, uh, but I guess you can't afford that guy for anything anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it was it was good little, uh, you know. Shout out to the idea that it's a Western style sci fi anyway. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I like the inclusion of the Deadwood characters there, uh, and of course, like any any true Star Wars fan of my generation, anytime you see anything related to Boba Fett, you get giddy because of his 15 seconds of badassness and the right no disintegrations line made him the coolest guy ever. No disintegration. When Boba when Darth Vader's like, hey dude, don't be so evil. Everyone's like, Oh, this guy must be cool. Yeah. <laughs> of course they 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 squandered it like twice, but um, hey, that's that's life. Uh <laughs> Um, okay, so, so now, we so we were talking about the protagonist not being good. Yeah. Uh, so your next point is um, characters learn best through failure, like all people. And I kind of think this was the main thing, not necessarily through failure, but you know, Baby Yoda was learning a lesson about sentient life, and you know, I don't think as a baby he started to pull together until the third episode. Where, I don't even think he got it. I do because he didn't eat anymore. Uh, yeah, the, but he tried to. At the beginning of the episode, once he was playing with the baby in the pond, he he started I, going differently. At I point. think I need to pull up that episode and that moment because I think he does. And the only reason he doesn't is because she's holding his hand also. Maybe or maybe he's he's learning like like you teach babies. I don't know. I, I don't he's think he's. Through, I don't. He might think not he's be through the lesson. I'd, yet. I'd have to. I'd have to rewatch that to be and, sure. And he might so not I'm be not through the lesson yet. But when you have infants, this is how you teach them. Mm-hmm. You sometimes hold their hands and say no. Yeah. And it takes them a while to figure out that they're not supposed to do it, mm-hmm. and maybe a little longer to realize why. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it's about characters learning. And um, and people, you might call eating other sentient beings a failure. That would be fair. <laughs> uh, evil is yeah, it? Probably. Well, no, but not act. if you not if you don't know it's sentient or don't see it that way. At that point, it's just an act of survival on your own part. Well, you're you're now saying is, and this would be a whole other uh, episode we might have to do here is is morality subjective or objective? And if it's objective, then what Baby Yoda did was evil even though he didn't know if it's subjective, you could argue that it's not evil because he did not know it was evil. I, I would say it's subjective, at least in this circumstance. I don't know. It seems like an evil act to me. He ate other things, but again, um, he didn't know, you know, if, 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 if I walk into a room and the only thing in that room is a table with a button on it and you say, Michael, push that button. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, I'll push that button. For me, all I did was push a button. I don't know that on the other side of the wall, you have created a device that when I push that button, it kills a person. Yes. So and, for and, me, and the it is not an evil act. Both in prison. My point is, I think pretty clear that if a person is unaware, how can you really say that it is definitively an evil act? Whereas if I knew the consequences of, of the action of pressing that button, of course I wouldn't do it because I am a moral person. That makes it subjective. No, no, because you would go to jail. You would be placed in jail because the act you commit would be wrong. That's because of the law. That's a different argument. Yeah, so, so we'll definitely have to do an episode on this later. Um, 
I love your next one. All people act out of character. And I think and this, this is, is, go ahead. This is one that really riles me because so often people, and it's people on the internet and you, yes. you see it, right? That's it's us like they and lose you. Their, <laughs> yeah. I do it all the time too. And it's like, Oh, he would never do that. Yes. But, <laughs> and, and the thing is, his character might not, you know, like I remember, I think we had this a lot when we talked about Jamie Lannister, right? And I would argue that uh, he was doing a bunch of wrong things, but uh, it's, you know, we don't know if it was just out of character or if it was the way his character would do it. Like when he went back at the end, I kind of thought it was out of the way his character arc was going, but I think he was overpowered by older emotions. Hmm. So you can kind of make that argument either way. My argument to that one is just that he was overpowered by bad writing. Um, <laughs> the, these, Jamie Lannis is like, I want to stick to my character. And they're like, no, you are going to go back. Anyway, um, the, the big thing here for me is simply that take a look at, uh, you can be reflective on this one. You can look at yourself. You'd be like, oh, well, you know, I did this thing that I regret. And you're like, oh, well, you know what? You did that thing you regret. That's against your character. You would never do that again unless circumstances were just so. If circumstances were just so, you might do that thing and subsequently you're doing something that's out of your character. So characters break character all the time. And mm -hmm. the only reason that we get we get uppity about it because we wanna understand the rules of a world and we wanna believe that things are consistent. If you know the bad guy is always consistently going to be the bad guy and then does something that's good, we call it redemption. Mm -hmm. How come no one gets pissy and out, out, out of shape with with that and don't go well that's way against character but when yeah. the good guy is always the good guy and then does something really bad you're like oh that's bad writing no yeah. he just could have had a moment or circumstances could, could have be been bad just writing, so the two aren't related <laughs> right right yeah the, true yeah. you know they have done plenty of stories where superman has gone bad and he's a great classic example of you know, they call him the Batman calls him the Boy Scout. Like he's he's the definitive good guy, you know, truth, justice in the American way. But there have been multiple there. There's been multiple storylines where where he's become a really evil guy The the um, immediately I'm thinking of the injustice storyline where I'm pretty sure Lex Luthor kills Lois and he decides once and for all to be done with Lex Luthor and he uses his heat vision to burn a hole through Luthor's brain and that's it, no more Luthor. And that sets him off on a tangent and he starts killing a bunch of people. He's like, you know what? We don't need we don't need to deal with this. I can just clean this clean this stuff, stuff up. Nope, lickety split. And he starts snapping everybody's necks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's against the character that we know to that point. Mm -hmm. When things happen, when things change or even if it's not as significant as the love of his life getting murdered, mm. sometimes people just do things out of character. Yeah. It you could know? be a momentary thing mm -hmm. or it could be a, a, it could be a defining point in a character where they shift down another path. Here's an easy you know one. Any, anyone ever shoplift? I would imagine most of you don't shoplift, but I'll bet as a teenager, a bunch of you might've grabbed a little something here or there. I know I did. I, I'm not, I'm very much against stealing. That is not my jam. I, I'm very much against dishonesty in general, mm -hmm. but I did do that when I was a kid. That was against my character. Yeah. You know, but you, but you learn, you change. But yeah. You know, and sometimes it's like, you know, you're still, as you're still developing your, your, you know, moral struggle, you know, um, you learn, you learn morals. You know, I think, a lot of people don't remember that, but it's like you learn moral behavior. You choose to to go with society or go against society. Mm -hmm. And that's ultimately where someone we would define as a criminal is where they deviate in certain areas that society says is too far. Um, and everyone deviates from what society thinks they should be. You know, and, and these are just points I want you to keep in mind when you make characters and cultures cultures do things that are wrong sometimes and it could be out of character for the culture you know it's the idea of you know every language has irregular verbs you know so that means every language you know had a point where they adopted something that was wrong to their language mm. but they adopted it because it made sense for some reason at it it, mm -hmm. it became every and language so, is like out of character every language is out of character you know so 
when you're creating characters and a, or even cultures, realize that sometimes, you know, it's like the reason a war star, starts is atypical for the character of the culture doing it. Or, you know, sometimes, sometimes the pacifist culture actually lifts swords and fights back and maybe it's even brutal. Um, and I, there are other things that come to mind here, which I don't think I'll spoil at this point because we're not spoiling something else. But, um, Do, yeah, can oh, I no, can I good. ask the subject? What are you talking about? There's a um, there's a, a culture in a book that um, is known to be um, like like Peaceful. the ultimate warrior race. Oh, warrior race. Okay, but then you find out like you know, back in time, they were the utter opposite. They were complete pacifists hmm. and something happened that switched the culture and the culture didn't even remember. And there's still people who, who go both ways. Mm -hmm. There's still like a group of people who follow the old ways. They mm -hmm. don't even realize that they're connected at the point of the stories. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, you know, and one of the things that ends up really screwing with the minds of one of the cultures is they realize that, oh, wait, we're the same thing. Mm. And so. Uh, it's yeah, that's definitely a discussion for a different episode. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't want to go too much into that. But the point being, cultures have these points, too. And sometimes it's a permanent deviation. And sometimes it's just temporary. Sometimes you just snap. You know, you have that mental break and at that moment you do something that you regret. I'm sure as a human, you've had these moments in your life too. I, I haven't, but I hear most people do. It's only because you're not human. That's right. I'm inhuman. So um, as you're developing, you know, people for your world, like keep this in, keep this in mind, like understand mm -hmm. that, you know, we're not all always consistent. A mm -hmm. culture isn't always consistent. A person isn't always consistent. If you make them too consistent, they will feel wrong to anyone who interacts with them because we all interact with fiction through patterns that we recognize. We recognize the hero's journey, which is the reason why we can pick up the story as we're going through it. We might not figure out all the details on the way, but the story makes sense to us. It almost feels built in. Same thing, you know, with like it, most storytelling, you know. It, it, and characters are based off of archetypes so you can you can get a handle of it in your head as the story develops you can actually enjoy the story and get those details and really like it you know these are the things that work and the problem is when you break a pattern and one is you know if you make a language that's too perfect anyone who looks through the language who will, will think it's fake because it's too good mm. um if if you make a culture that you know doesn't screw up, if you make people who aren't imperfect in some way, uh, it will just it, people might not dislike it, but it, something it will seem off, hmm. you know. And unless it's a one-off character, like I say, a Superman, um, you know, it, it's it's hard to pull off for a long period of time. I I will say that there's definitely a comfort in being able to predict characters. But you should not. You should not always be able to predict the actions of a character. Sure, and I'm like not that's, saying that you should never no zig or zag. You, you should, but those are the details that make it good. You need the patterns to be able to deviate, or people mm -hmm. don't understand the anchor point. If they see the anchor point here and go there, and typically, what people really say when they say um, it's out of character is. I don't like what you did with that character. Right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it brings me to the true point where if you ever have this moment in fiction, you deliver, whether it's a role playing story or it's a novel you've put together or like your Mandalorian that you write in a few years, if you ever do that, that, that proves the utter success of the work that you've done mm. because the people become attached to a level in which um, they feel the need to tell you that you're wrong with your ideas because they care enough about the characters. Mm -hmm. I remember there was one character I had in a role-playing game and he, I'm not the kind of game master that played a character in a party. I know a lot of game masters, especially when you're younger, this is a, a thing that you do one to flesh out the party uh, usually but some 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 game masters or dungeon masters would do it because they liked to play characters, you know, even though they were the game master. 
I played lots of characters. I didn't care about having one in the party. I had one attached for a long time to a group. He was a dwarf character, and I really wanted, I was planning to kill him the entire story. And he was around for a long time, for months. And uh, I think, uh, you know, a, a monthly or a weekly campaign, maybe even a year. And I had planned, and I killed him off. And the group just rolled past it like nothing. And I, uh, and, it, and, it, and it, you know, and like, they just kept talking like, oh, okay, that's, that's this thing that's not happened. And, and which this always happens too. You can plan these things. You expected it to the, be significant. But of course me being a bitter game master, I think I, I, I pulled out a monster and started slapping the party around I'm sure you them did. for not uh, <laughs> properly behaving. <laughs> Now you're not behaving the way the characters I expect you should behave. <laughs> you should be mad. You should be uh, sad about this dwarf. The characters would have been. Um, the right. players were not. And I wanted to hurt the players too. Yeah. And, um, and of course, sometimes, you know, when you play in a long campaign, uh, people will let characters go at moments anyway. So mm. uh, it, it, it's all the way life works. But so you can't always plan that. And you don't know when it is, but it means a character has really resonated typically with multiple people for you to hear um, the feedback, um, you know, that you did something wrong. You don't know your story. It's mm. very rare, you know, unless you're uh, George R. R. Martin, where you can, uh, as you're finishing your last book, look at all the things people complained about and try and fix them in your version. So you don't get yelled at, but what he's going to realize is people are going to still yell at him mm -hmm. because uh, one, he waited way too long to release it. Mm -hmm. But two, he's still not going to do it the way I, uh, everyone wants it done because no right. one wants it done the same way. Like I'll never get my story probably, which is the white walkers win. <laughs> that seems the way to end this correctly. Um, not really. Not I mean, really. They, brand, they prob they brand probably, brand should have been the night should king. have brand should have been the night king. Oh, ever. that would have been cool. Th th that was the proper story to tell with them where the three eye Raven, the reason he had the thing with the night king was because he was the night king. And he had to go back in time to start this all off. And so it becomes a big circle mm. that can't be broken, but you can get past it. Mm. I like it. You know, whatever. What, whatever. Sorry, George, you blew it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, George, you blew it. See, in my version, the hound becomes king. But so does the mountain. And then there is a war between their factions all I wanted that entire series was to watch the mountain on a battlefield cleave through warriors. And they never did that. It was such a lost opportunity. So in my yeah, version, it seemed like a waste mm -hmm. in, in my, in my version, there would be sequences, multiple sequences where the mountain would just be cleaving through many people, just it, mowing because, them yeah. down. Like, well, like a scythe through wheat. See, and here's one final screw up. They did in the show. We'll, we'll t top it off with this. Okay. Here's the other one, right? I didn't mind that Arya killed the Night King. I know. Oh, see, I thought that was that. awesome. I thought that was fine. I would have preferred it to be done in a way where, like, one of the other White Walkers comes up where the Night King is, and you have right there, you you know, you have poor Jon Snow looking like he's really done because he's now surrounded on two sides, and then the other white Walker impales the night King and pulls off the face. That would have been that actually would have, would have been amazing, but I, yeah, people would have said it was wrong because the white walkers should have known, but there's nothing indicating they would have known that. Well, but, but, but also the, when the white walkers die, they, they just turn to ice chunks. So she wouldn't have had a face to carve off. Well, you would have had, a, that would have been taken care of in the story. So yeah, they would have had um, to do something there. Because that. that would have been the proper way to deal with, I think that would have been a way to show off like her character development mm. and her taking the spotlight there. But I also think Jamie should have killed Cersei. And I think he should have gone back to kill her. And I thought he was going to go back to kill her. And then all the things that happened. I was happened. hoping I didn't think he was. I was hoping he was, but I didn't think he was. But, but I see, thought he should from, have. From my perspective, I thought he was going to go do it as a mercy. As, as an end to her reign, but also as a mercy because the, those that would have found her to kill her would have been worse, and he would have either done way, it as either, a mercy, either way, which I would have been okay with. I would have been okay for any reason he should have had to do it. 
Uh, and that would have really been the only way he could really have redemption for mm. the stuff he did in part with her. Uh, now, on on the other side of that, then she should have been she should have killed the mountain as well. I think. no 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 one should have killed yes. the mountain. Yes, the she mountain should, should the mountain. rule. The mountain should have killed the hound. And no, she should have killed the mountain. The mountain should have ruled. No. Yes. And the dragon should have like blown fire on on him when he was sitting on the on the throne. Then. Okay. No, because he would have eaten the eaten the dragon as like a dragon steak. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that would, what beats and, what beats rock? Nothing beats rock. Michael, Good old rock. <laughs> Michael and I would have then had an episode talking about the mountain committing genocide against dragons. Yes, that would that have been, would have fine been by me. Yes. <laughs> you know? And so you know these things are going to always happen, especially when things capture people's attentions. People are going to look for reasons to put a crazy theory out there so they get attention both good and bad i I have a feeling most people who were calling it especially genocide uh were people who really were just using it as an opportunity to get attention by say something bad about baby yoda but i can respect that um all right so what's so what's the world builder task okay this is the same one i gave michael you need to go binge watch the mandalorian today and the you real know, world task is to go binge watch The Mandalorian today. <laughs> times two. All right. And we'll see you all next week. Thank you so much for listening to The World Builder's Anvil. We would love it if you would share The World Builder's Anvil with two of your friends. And so would they. If they are unfamiliar with podcasts, then you get to introduce them to the wonderful world of podcasting. Take them to Stitcher or iTunes, or best of all, just send them to our website, www.gardul.com. That's G-A-R-D-U-L.com. Now strike while the mythril's hot.